have the right to engage in a dialogue with board members or staff. Please remain respectful of the forum and refrain from uttering, writing, or displaying profane, personal, threatening, derogatory, demeaning, or other abusive statements toward the board, any member thereof, staff, or any other person. Members of the audience should be respectful of the views expressed by speakers, staff, and public that disrupts your ability to remain engaged or participate in this meeting. Please notify the Sergeant at Arms or other county staff. Thank you for your cooperation. Okay, before we begin our public hearing items, Executive Officer, please read the call-in information that was also provided on the agenda and explain the speaking rules. For members of the public wishing to participate remotely, as indicated on the agenda, please call 877-692-8955 and use participant code number 443-3663. Members of the public participating remotely and in the boardroom, you will have the opportunity to address the board throughout the meeting. You will receive up to one minute to address the board on each of the public hearing items, and you will receive one minute to comment on closed session items, and one additional minute for general public comment for a total of two minutes. For members of the public joining us remotely, when the board moves to the item you wish to address, promptly press one then zero to be entered into the speaking queue. Remember to turn down the volume on your device as soon as the moderator calls on you or there will be an echo. You will need to press one then zero for each item on which you would like to speak. To ensure we hear from both in-person and telephonic speakers, we will alternate between the two speaking queues. Members of the public who are in attendance, when you hear or see your name displayed on the screen, please come down to the front of the boardroom and staff will assist you. Please do not approach the podium until directed to do so. We will begin by calling in-person speakers, and while they are coming forward, we will take telephonic speakers. Great. Uh, Executive Officer, please swear in the members of the public who are requesting to address this board on public hearing items. Please stand and raise your right hand. In the testimony you may give before this board, you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. You may be seated. Okay, um, let's begin with item one. And for members of the public on the telephone, please press one then zero now to comment on this item, item one. Executive officer, please read in the short title. Item one is a hearing on the annexation of a tentative subdivision project known as Track 82160 within the unincorporated area of Hacienda Heights to County Lighting Maintenance District 1687 and County Lighting District Landscaping and Lighting Act-1 Unincorporated Zone. A written departmental statement was submitted and correspondence was received. Okay, and I see we have Steve Berger, who's a uh, Deputy Director for our Department of Public Works, is here and available for questions. Are there any supervisors that would like to make remarks on this item? Item one, seeing none. Executive officer, please call the members of the public who signed up to speak on this item. Madam Chair, there are no in-person speakers that have signed up for this item. Moderator, may we have the first remote speaker, please. Our first participant is Eric Previn. You may begin. Thank you and good morning, supervisors. I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little puzzled by today. It's a bunch of hearings in a closed session, no, no good stuff, but this is interesting because Pastrella oversees the uh, you know the levying for the county lighting districts and so on and so forth mark pastrella head of public works and also coincidentally the hefe over at the la county flood district which has a nice little uh section that's attached to our golf and tennis which i know oh here he goes but we we need to get supervisor horvath i know she's back in uh eric you know today. uh we love you but this is item one and this is a lighting district for hacienda heights Fair enough, in Supervisor District 1. So I'm not gonna quibble with a quibbler. Uh, you're right, I, I will stand Say down. Say that again, am I good Thank you for bringing this to, ask Berger to bring it to Mr. Pastrella's attention. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Okay, um, next speaker, please. Next, go to line of Alec B. You may begin. Hi, I'm just making sure that I'm listed for public comment because last week I waited an hour and my name wasn't called. So I'm just making sure 
that I'm listed for public comment that the public can hear for two weeks in a row, my name has not been Okay. Um, uh, have we got board, him no, on for public, for, comment? for public comment? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. Hey, I'm Madam Chair, we have, there are no other remote speakers in the queue to address the board. Okay, seeing no other speakers uh, for item one, it would be appropriate to close the public hearing, direct the tabulation of the ballots, and table the item until later in the meeting for tabulation results and action by the board. Out objections, that will be the order. Let's go on to item two. For members of the public on the telephone, press one then zero now to comment on this item, item two. Executive officer, please read in the short title. Item two is a hearing on the amended and restated Calabasas Landfill Joint Powers Agreement consolidated the original Calabasas Landfill JPA and its subsequent amendments and provide for continuing funding and operation of the Calabasas Landfill and the ordinance for adoption amending County Code Title 12 Environmental Protection to set refuse disposal rates at the Calabasas Landfill delete all references to tipping fee rates for the Calabasas landfill and transfer the rate setting authority back to the district. No departmental statement was submitted and correspondence was received. Thank you. And we have Afizia Davenport, our chief executive officer, and we have John Cook, the assistant chief executive officer. They're available for questions on this item. Are there any supervisors? I see Supervisor Horvath, would you like to make some remarks? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks to the CEO and uh, Sanitation for bringing the proposed updates for the G JPA uh, to our board today. I'd also like to add, I'm excited about the prospect of uh, the anaerobic digestion facility project at the Calabasas landfill, um, which will provide a local- Remote speakers in the queue to address the board. Okay, it would be appropriate to close the public hearing and vote on this item. Item five is now before us, moved by Supervisor Mitchell, seconded by Supervisor Barger to approve the item. Executive officer, please call the roll. Item five is before you, Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Solis, aye. Supervisor Mitchell. Aye. Supervisor Mitchell, aye. Supervisor Horvath. Aye. Supervisor Horvath, aye. Supervisor Barger. Aye. Supervisor Barger, aye. Supervisor Hahn. Aye. Supervisor Hahn, aye. Motion carries, five to zero. Okay, thank you, Dean. And we're gonna move on now to item six. For members of the public on the telephone, please press one then zero now to comment on this item, item six. Executive officer, please read in the short title. Item six is a hearing on project number 2018-003138-1 to authorize a 17 unit attached residential condominium development on a 1.2 gross acre multifamily lot located at 18002 Colima Road in Roland Heights in the Roland Heights Zone District, East San Gabriel Valley Planning Area applied for by Psy Capital LLC. A written departmental statement was submitted and correspondence was received. Okay, and we have Amy Bodek, our Director of Regional Planning, is here and available for questions. Are there any supervisors that would like to um, make remarks? Okay, Executive Officer, please call the members of the public who have signed up to speak on this item, item six. Will the following individual please come forward and staff will assist you? Limos Ray. As a final reminder for participants on the telephone, if you would like to address item six, uh, if you have not already done so, please press one and zero now to be placed in the speaking queue. Moderator, may we have the first remote speaker, please. Our first participant is Lisa Griffin. You may begin. Hi, I'd like to thank my, uh, start by thanking the board today. The Kalima Villa project's been in the works for years and our goal has never changed. We wanna provide affordable and attractive housing options um, for people in Roland Heights. Um, we're coming to the board today for the plan amendment. Um, from Zoom meetings to multiple in-person community meetings, we presented the project in its various stages, partnering with neighbors on revising our plans to have the least amount of impact in the community. Um, based on community feedback, we've accommodated requests to lower building heights by four feet to assure no blockage of views to the neighbors above. We've designed the plans to support and approve existing hiking trails behind the project we volunteered two low-income units as part of the project. The residential plans create less impact on the community than the previously planned commercial building, most specifically less traffic impact. The project sits next to a 600 unit apartment complex, making the addition of this housing project was small by comparison. 
The Regional Planning Commission unanimously has approved this project. Due to the low public turnout at our in-person meetings, we took it upon ourselves thank to, you. Your time to reach out to this. Um, okay, thank you. Next speaker, please. Our next participant is Roy Humphreys. You may begin. Uh, thank you, and uh, let's take the total of funds from uh, building this project uh, to all property taxes in the near future to expedite the expansion of the Fullerton to the 60, which uh, uh, Janice Hahn uh, tanked. Uh, uh, f uh, back and allowed James Yang of uh, uh, Public Works to uh, the reason why that they were doing that much needed situation on uh, Fullerton and the 60 is because of loss of five houses. Here you're getting 17 a win-win situation and the, the, the also with the diabolical plan from uh, planning and came to our public meeting and said they want to make using the Fullerton uh, uh, 60 access as painful as possible to get us out of our cars congratulations you people are the best thank you thank you for that compliment uh, next speaker please our next participant is Amanda Wan. You may begin. Hi, uh, I'm in favor for more housing in the area. The lot right now is an eyesore. It's empty and it really does not have any use and it could be so much more useful for the people in the area who need housing and it's great that there could be low income options for the families around there. And um, the fact that it's not going to obstruct any hiking trails, which is really popular for all of us who live in that area, is great. So I would be happy to see more housing in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Our next participant is Irene Lee. You may begin. Hi, this is Irene. I'm residential of that area, and I fully support for Colima uh, Villa project. This initiative holds a great opportunity for our community, addressing housing needs and forcing sustainable development. And I believe it will make positive impact on our community well-being. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Our next participant is Alec B. You may begin. I am calling in regard to this item and to speak on the um, on the production side. When they're building, I notice that a lot of um, ordinances that get passed or things to get built, when it's time for the things to get built, one race of people are doing the building. And there are other races of people that apply. And I just feel that something should be included where that it's a diverse um, group when they're being funded by the county so that different races of people can get jobs, not just one race of, of a crowd to do the work. Because all of the county funding, when the time, when the work is to be implemented, it's all one race of people doing the work. And it's other races that would like to get uh, jobs and working construction also. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Madam Chair, there are no other remote speakers in the queue to address the board. OK. Um, it would be appropriate to close the public hearing at this time and vote on the item. Item six is now before us, moved by Supervisor Solis, seconded by uh, Supervisor Barger to approve the item. Executive officer, please call the roll. Item six is before you, Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Solis, aye. Supervisor Mitchell. Supervisor Mitchell, aye. Supervisor Horvath. Aye. Supervisor Horvath, aye. Supervisor Barger. Aye. Supervisor Barger, aye. Supervisor Hahn. Aye. Supervisor Hahn, aye. Motion carries, five to zero. Okay, let's move on to item seven. For members of the public on the telephone, please press one then zero now for item seven to comment. Executive officer, please read in the short title. Item seven is a hearing on number 2023-002078 on proposed amendments to county code title 22 planning and zoning to align with concurrent updates to the licensing requirements for gun dealers in county code title seven business licenses to enhance gun regulations, including defining gun dealers and clarifying the allowance of gun dealers in some commercial zones and industrial zones. A written departmental statement was submitted and correspondence was received. Okay. Um... We have Amy Bodek still here, still our regional planning director, and she's available for questions. Um, I would like to speak on this. Um, you know, 
I believe gun violence has become an epidemic that's impacted way too many in our communities. It's really um, torn apart families and um, has caused long harm and lasting trauma. Uh, this board has repeatedly committed itself to do everything we can to fight against gun violence and keep our communities safe. Today, um, we're going to vote to approve the last of our four new ordinances established this year to enhance gun regulations and hopefully prevent gun violence in unincorporated LA County. This board has already approved and implemented the first three ordinances, one banning the sale of 50 caliber guns, another prohibiting the carrying of firearms on county property, and most recently, an ordinance enacting new regulatory requirements for gun and ammunition dealers. Today, we have our fourth and final ordinance, at least for now, um, and this ordinance will implement new zoning requirements for gun and ammunition dealers. Specifically, it will require new uh, gun and ammunition dealers to obtain a conditional use permit from our Department of Regional Planning. And before now, there was no specific category for gun and ammunition dealers. So the permits these stores received in the county varied and did not have consistent uh, zoning regulations or requirements. And the ordinance will require that all new gun and ammunition stores operate at least a thousand feet away from each other and from areas that children gather like schools, parks, libraries, uh, daycares. And I think it's important to note that this 1000 foot buffer zone will only apply again to new stores. So any existing gun and ammunition stores that are already operating within the buffer zone will be able to continue at their location. These changes, along with all the efforts um, I believe that this board has made um, to prevent gun violence, um, is just one thing I think we can do to help keep our communities safe. So I want to thank Supervisor Solis, who is my co-author on the original motions that led to all four of these ordinances being enacted, um, and to the team, well, the fourth one hasn't been enacted yet, and to the team at the Department of Regional Planning and County Council, who Brought to, who put together a comprehensive zoning ordinance in record time, may I add. Thank you very much. Um, today is the first hearing of this ordinance. If it passes today, we'll have a second hearing on December 19th, um, and the ordinance will go into effect 30 days after that. Supervisor Solis. Thank you, Madam Chair, and congratulations uh, on your fine work on this issue. You know, this board has taken over 17 different actions on gun control and gun safety, whether we've been supportive of state uh, bills or federal legislation, we've been there. And this is just another part or chapter in which we are trying to move quickly to provide safety and protection in our neighborhood. So I know you talked about the Zephyr, uh, the, Zephyr the, the buffer <laughs> zone area, and we're looking in particular at protecting our children, daycare centers, my God, this is still an issue, parks and schools in our unincorporated area. And I don't think I have to remind uh, this board how important it is to continue to move ahead on preventing gun violence. We saw tragic incidents happening uh, in Monterey Park last year, continue to see things happening and across the country. Just over the holidays, we saw three students that were uh, killed and supposedly that was uh, alleged hate crime, but nonetheless, gun violence was a, was a big factor there. Um, and we have to speak out about that. So I want to commend the board. I want to thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and I want to thank our regional uh, board, our regional planning uh, board and your leadership uh, because you've done a great job, Amy, and I really want to salute you and your staff on this. These are tough issues. So I really thank you and the board, and hopefully uh, we can get this done on the second on the second level as well so we can get the, the ordinance completed. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Solis. Supervisor Horvath. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to commend you both in bringing these items forward and helping to lead our board on all of these uh, various motions and making these necessary changes. Uh, we know the Supreme Court's recent actions communicate to our country uh, prioritization of the rights of gun owners over the rights of victims of gun violence, but our county is taking action to say the exact opposite, uh, that we want to ensure the safety of residents and their loved ones in all the ways that we can. And uh, you noted that this ordinance 
um, will not uh, restrict uh, people's ability to purchase a gun legally, but it does ensure that new sites where gun and ammunition sales will be conducted will not be near our schools or sensitive sites, which is um, mind, uh, being much more mindful of how we are building our communities to be safer. So I'm very much supportive, glad to see us moving in this direction and finalizing this uh, very important action. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Horvath. Um, Executive Officer, uh, please call the members of the public that have signed up to speak on this item. Madam Chair, there are no in-person speakers that have signed up for this item. Moderator, may we have the first remote speaker, please? Our first participant is Mia Levis Porter. You may begin. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair Hahn and Supervisor Solis, for all the work you've done to make this ordinance happen. Too many people are impacted by gun violence. I am a survivor of gun violence. My brother Junior died by gun suicide, and I know all too well that easy access to guns can be the difference between life and death. So I appreciate the efforts of this board, uh, that this board has taken to address the epidemic of gun violence from all angles. I'm also a mom of two, and I'm dedicated to trying to protect my kids from gun violence. Gun stores should not be located near a park, school, or other protected sites. So I'm happy this ordinance will ensure going forward that gun stores will be spread out as much as possible in LA County. And this ordin ordinance is just one step towards making our communities safer. Again, thank you, Supervisors Han and Solis, and the entire Board of Supervisors for all the work you're doing to ensure gun safety in LA. Please support this ordinance. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Our next participant is Megan Otteson. You may begin. Good morning to the board, and thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'm calling in support of this item on behalf of Women Against Gun Violence, a 30-year-old nonprofit working to end gun violence at the local, state, and federal level. Uh, buffer zones for firearm dealers in proximity to sensitive receptors have been adopted by many surrounding jurisdictions, um, such as Burbank, Culver City, Santa Monica, and are a common sense safety measure. Gun retailers can be targets for crimes such as national grab stats and other destructive events that make nearby schools and other locations especially vulnerable. Uh, we know that ATF inspections are years behind, and so any business whose regulation um, is, well, less than regular should be far away from where our children and families gather. Um, we want to thank you all for moving forward with the zoning change today and all you're doing to protect LA County from gun violence. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Our next participant is Eric Previn. You may begin. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the the four pack of impressive steps to limit or to create a safer environment for you know citizens in and around guns um i i certainly hope that the county council has examined this closely about for lawsuits because i will tell you i what i'm not a big fan of is flying in the face of the law and getting in trouble and then just chewing up county uh, legal dollars or city legal dollars as in the case of many of Mitchell Farrell and Paul Krikorian's failed initiatives that were embarrassing because we could tell, well, you can't do that. I mean, I understand, but we don't want to do that, do we? That's like kind of illegal. So I hope that we're not just putting our own desire to clean up. I mean, we do want safety and some of these things are definitely going to make it safer. So I'm, I'm pleased. I'm trying to be cooperative, but I think that we should spend a little less time on gun violence and a little more time on pedestrian violence automobiles where you guys are running the metro and the county roads i mean thank my you. god Every thank you I I stop while you're ahead down thank you uh, well, we'd like the cooperative part um next speaker please our next participant is roy humphreys you may begin and uh, thank you once again uh, for your uh, pathetic pompous uh, pandering when in fact and you can do your own research uh, things like what you're talking about have nothing to do with gun safety. They haven't done a darn thing over the history uh, of, uh, quote, uh, your uh, legislative endeavors uh, to stem uh, the acts which you just alluded to, such as Monterey Park. That's, that's such an uh, abuse of your position and the subject, uh, and really uh, sensitive subject matter. So get on subject. Stop the pathetic, pompous panic. And it's just, you know, good zoning. We go for that. 
but the, the, to trying to allude to the fact that this is quote gun saving you're going to impact anybody who wants to uh, do uh, some sort of uh, bad thing with a gun you could forget it but it just it's nauseating thank you thank you next speaker please our next participant is hector ramirez you may begin Good morning, buenos dias. My name is Hector Ramirez. I live in Chatsworth, city of Chatsworth. Um, I really want to thank uh, the Board of Supervisors for this motion and I said in support. Uh, we have seen that since 2023, there has been an increase of almost 40% uh, in suicides across the country. And we know that uh, suicides, uh, deaths by gun is one of the leading causing deaths, both in older adults and in our younger folks. Taking this particular measure is not only a safety measure, but it is a mental health uh, preventative issue, given the fact that so many of our younger folks across the county are experiencing suicidality and attempts. Uh, by putting measures like this, not only do you help to keep our community safe, but you, keep, you help to keep our children safe uh, in times when they need a lot of support. Once again, thank you very much for this uh, motion. Thank you. Next speaker, please. And Madam Chair, there are no other remote speakers in the queue to address the board. All right, then it would be appropriate to close the public hearing and vote on this item. Item seven is now before us. Um, I'll move it, seconded by Supervisor Solis to approve the item. Executive Officer, please call the roll. Item seven is before you, Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Mitchell. Aye. Supervisor Mitchell. Aye. Supervisor Horvath. Aye. Supervisor Horvath. Aye. Supervisor Barger. Aye. Supervisor Barger. Aye. Supervisor Hahn. Aye. Supervisor Hahn. Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to return to item one. Executive officer, please report on the ballot tabulation results. Madam Chair and members of the board, after tabulating the ballots, a determination has been made that no, ma no majority protest exists against the proposed annexation and levy of annual assessment of tentative subdivision territory known as track number 82160 within the unincorporated area of Hacienda Heights to the County Lighting Maintenance District 1687 and the County Lighting District Landscaping and Lighting Act-1 unincorporated zone. As a result, it would be appropriate for the board to adopt the resolution ordering annexation and levy of assessment and the joint resolution approving and accepting the negotiated exchange of property tax revenues resulting from the annexation of subdivision territories to County Lighting Maintenance District 1687 for fiscal year 24-25. Okay, uh, item one is now before us, moved by Supervisor Solis. Seconded by Supervisor Horvath. To approve the item, Executive Officer, please call the roll. Item one is before you, Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Solis, aye. Supervisor Mitchell. Aye. Supervisor Mitchell, aye. Supervisor Horvath. Aye. Supervisor Horvath, aye. Supervisor Barger. Aye. Supervisor Barger, aye. Supervisor Hahn. Aye. Supervisor Hahn, aye. Motion carries five to zero. All right, we will now hear from members of the public wishing to address this board on closed session items and general public comment. For members of the public on the telephone, you can press one then zero now to comment on these items, either closed session or general public comment, or maybe both. Um, executive officer, please call the members of the public who signed up to speak on these items. Will Mimos Ray and Roy Gorham, please come forward and staff will assist you. As a final reminder for participants on the telephone, if you would like to address a uh, public, general public comment, if you have not already done so, please press one and zero now to be placed in the speaking queue. Moderator, may we have the first remote speaker, please. Our first participant is Roy Humphreys. You may begin. Specific for uh, uh, Supervisor Solis, and as uh, per my uh, email correspondence yesterday, that uh, when your staff comes to a public meeting in Roland Heights and lies to them, I'm good, and hopefully I'll be there to call them out as I have in two items. On uh, what one is specifically is the uh, Ninth Circuit. Uh, uh, court situation and uh, lies will not be tolerated in any form and uh, hopefully I will be available in our community uh, to address them. 
Lies will not be tolerated. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Our next participant is Paul Hennessy. You may begin. <laughs> 